let's take a look at how we can get input from a MIDI instrument. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. And you can see up here in our ready function, um, you, what you have to do, no matter what, if you want to use a MIDI controller of some sort, such as a MIDI instrument, like the one hopefully you see on screen right now uh, of my keyboard, uh, you have to call os.openMIDIInputs. You have to do that, otherwise you will not receive any input from any MIDI controller that you plug in. Now, if you would like, you can go ahead and you can print out what these inputs are. And you can go ahead and you see that down there in the corner in the input. Sorry, I uh, get printed out down there. Now you see I have an SE25. Um, that is the model of what this is, and the brand is a Nectar. Now to get our MIDI messages, as you see by our comment here, um, you can get or access the MIDI message, uh, of course, uh, when we can end up get down here. Um, but we can just put this inside of our input, and we can just check our event. If our event is an input event MIDI, okay, so if that comes back as true, then we've at least recognized we are hitting a button from a MIDI controller of some sort. And you don't need to have this check in here uh, for the channel, but I'm going to go ahead and use this channel because you can separate things by channels. If you would like, the default channel uh, of, I think it's 14. I want to say it's 13 or 14. It's actually reserved for percussionist instruments. I hope I remember that one right. <laughs> and the other ones you can assign to whatever. So you can have one instrument assigned to channel 0, another one is assigned to channel 2, 3, etc. Of course, I just left mine at 0 because I only have the one instrument anyway. So if this instrument is on is channel 0, which we can uh, also change this. Go to a different check we wanted to but we'll go over that in a sec um you can see i'm just printing out that my midi button is being pressed i'm printing out uh these are all the properties that come with a midi controller right and a midi event so we can get the channel of it which again we compare it up there we can get the pitch the velocity uh, the velocity is how quick that button was pressed whether it was pressed slowly quickly uh, we can get the message from the MIDI signal here, you see, and that comes out to uh, to an enum uh, with a keyboard that is going to be the numbers you're going to get there is either an eight or a nine. One of them means the button is being pressed, and one is the button has been released, essentially. Uh, the next is event dot instrument, which you saw down there again in the output there. Instrument zero is a piano, so. I know it's a little weird seeing a lot of zeros down there, but that's just coincidence that keyboard ends up being uh, the like, defaults and a keyboard is what I've got. Uh, and then you got the pressure here, which I haven't been able to trigger on my keyboard, so I, I guess it's just something that I have no control over here. But see, those are all the different properties that we can look at, you can get, you can set. Well, we can't set all of these, but we probably shouldn't. But. Uh, you get the idea. So what if we want to get a specific type of, what if we want to use this for something like a game, for example? Well, we can come in here and what we can do is we can actually use a match statement instead of using all these ifs. And of course, we don't have to use a match. We could also, you could use a bunch of ifs if you wanted to, or you could look and just listen for a specific button being pressed. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the event dot pitch and if I hit pitch 72 I'm gonna go ahead and print out a string saying pitch 72 has been found all right and for that I'm going to uncomment this so we can actually keep printing out the pitch here and I'll go ahead and start it and you see with my keyboard uh, the pitch I'm starting at is 60 so you see we get two of them because we get the press and then the release 
There you go. As we're moving along. That's 71, so 72 will be this next key. And you see that has triggered the next the next uh, piece here. So in order for this, uh, you can see it's triggering when I press down and when I and when I lift the button up. So to do that, you could just have uh, if you have some kind of switch. Uh, you can just toggle that on and off, right? So you can have it uh, when it's pressed, it turns on. When you release, it turns off. And then it has to be off in order to be triggered when you press it again or something. But you get the idea of how these work. So you know how to get this information, how to get uh, specific inputs from your MIDI controller. If you want to narrow down each of your little uh, pictures here for working with a game, if you want to use it for controls and a game or a software, perhaps, if you want to allow MIDI, MIDI buttons to trigger different, different things, if you want to allow that ability, at least. All right, so that's it. That's a quick little short one after last week's long video. I figured we could wind down with something that's still interesting. Something that's not really, that I've never seen on YouTube or uh, really get discussed or any of that. As well as something that can be short and sweet that maybe some of you will find interesting or useful. Alright, take care. We'll see you in the next one.